Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. Uh, it's been about a year since I've recorded anything, but I do plan on being more consistent now that wedding season is coming to an end uh, and hopefully putting out more videos. So feel free to put in the comments below what you'd like to see on my next video. Today, I'm gonna be talking about Portra 400. I've had a lot of people ask me how I'm liking Portra, what my switch from Fuji has looked like. Most of you know that I was primarily a Fuji 400 shooter. I love this film stock, but it did get discontinued uh, earlier this year and there's only limited amounts right now. So I did make the switch at the beginning of the year to Kodak so that way I could start getting used to uh, Portra 400 and incorporating it into my work. So today I'm gonna talk about how I meter this film stock. Uh, I'm gonna show you some images, some examples, uh, and really just how beautiful this film stock actually is. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. First thing I'm going to talk about is how to meter for Portra 400. So I always put uh, 200 on my light meter consistently. This is especially when it's overcast. Sometimes I'll even rate it a bit more than 200. So for example, the other day I was shooting a wedding and it was super overcast, looked like it was gonna rain. Uh, my meter was telling me probably 250th of a second for uh, metering at 200 ISO but I knew that it was pretty dark and so I decided to rate it at probably 100 so I did 1 25th of a second on my um for my shutter speed instead so I gave it an extra stop so in situations like that I do tend to rate differently this is one of those things where the more that you shoot the film you'll start to understand it better and what you like for your personal style I know that 2 50th of a second would have turned out completely fine um, but I do like my film slightly more overexposed even as I did with with Fuji so I do like to rate it at 200 and I do have the bulb out so that's consistent across the board I always do my bulb out for Portra 400 and Portra 800. And what I usually do is I'll meter for the shadows. So for example, if the sun was coming directly behind them, then I know that I can meet, just meter directly in front like this, have the bulb facing towards the camera where I'm shooting and have the bulb out. If the sun's coming from the side, then it's probably gonna give me a higher shutter speed, which might underexpose the image. So typically if the sun is coming in from the side, I don't want it hitting the bulb here. I, I guess that would be considered a mid-tones reading if you hold it just in front. So half the bulb is being hit. I usually always meter for the shadow. So in that case, when the sun is coming from the side, I might turn my bulb away from the sun towards the shaded side, but I'm not pointing it down. I'm still keeping it directly straight pointing, um, just pointing straight out. So most of the time my meter is just in front here as I do a lot of backlighting, but in situations where I am side lighting them, then I do tend to move it slightly away from the sun so that the bulb isn't being hit. Uh, and again, always keeping it at uh, ISO 200 on my meter. When it comes to shooting this film stock indoors, that's one thing that I really love about Portra is that it does have that flexibility. Whereas Fuji, most of the time I could never do any getting ready portraits on film um, if i did it was just black and white film so portrait does have that flexibility which is really nice and it's the same idea when i'm metering indoors so you don't want to meter too close to the window because obviously that bulb is going to get all that window light um, and it's going to give you a higher shutter speed so typically again if the window if I was metering in here and this window was coming to my side, I'm not gonna meter just in front. I'm gonna turn it away from that window to the side and really meter for those shadows. So that way I overexpose the film and I get a beautiful reading. And for the most part, you know, in most situations, most getting ready situations, I'm almost always at a 60th at 2.8, especially in this type of scenario where it's just one window and maybe there's no other light in the room. Um, so just know that indoors obviously you are going to be working with limited light you are going to need a slower shutter speed and i do find it best to overexpose than to 
go on the line of underexposure. So if I'm not sure, then usually I'll do um, the lower shutter speed or I'll sometimes take you know, two photos just to see the difference. So I might take one at 1 25th of a second and I might take another image at a 60th of a second. There's nothing wrong with getting uh, two images, trying things out, and then you'll know better for next time as well what worked. Um, and it will just give you a better idea of your metering and if you're metering correctly. I am still getting my film scan on the Frontier scanner with PhotoVision. So that is how I scan my Portra 400. I always use Frontier. I do like the, the pop and the contrast that it gives. If you're a Nuritsu fan, then you know that Nuritsu does have a slightly sharper scan and it does have more detail in the overall image in the shadows. Um, so it looks a little less contrasty uh, and you're getting that detail in the shadows. But I personally like the more contrast that you get with Frontier for Portra 400. So I'm just gonna talk quickly about the difference between Fuji 400 and the Portra 400. So most of you guys know that I started out with Fuji 400, it's beautiful film stock. So the main differences between the two is that Portra 400 does run slightly warmer. So even in the skin tones, you'll notice a slight warmness to the skin. To the greens, there's more warmness. If you do overexpose Portra 400 too much, that actually becomes its weakness. So you'll notice that the skin can become a little too orange um, and the colors can overall become wonky if you overexpose this film too much. Whereas with Fuji 400, I would overexpose this film three, four, five stops, and I would still get beautiful skin tones, beautiful colors. So that was the pro of shooting Fuji 400, was there was way more flexibility with overexposure. With Portra 400, I need to be a lot more accurate with my metering. So I'm not usually overexposing this film stock more than one or two, or maybe three stops, but usually it's just one or two stops of overexposure. Another little small thing is that with Fuji, you had the nice stick. So once you finish the uh, film roll, you could just stick and peel film to hold it together. Whereas with the Kodak, of course, you need to lick it. So you need to lick it to seal it after you finish shooting it. That is just a small downside. I usually just have tape always on me. So I'll have a fanny pack or an apron and I'll have my tape ready to go. So I'll just have like two little pieces of tape to really hold the Kodak over. Um, and then I don't have to lick it or do anything like that. So that's just one little tip. Make sure to always have tape on hand. Price difference wise, Fuji 400 I was getting at $9, maybe $9.50 a roll with downtown camera and that was with my membership discount. With Kodak with downtown camera I do have the film membership with them which is pretty much free to get so if you're in Toronto definitely get that membership and it saves me 25% on Kodak film stocks. So at this point with the discount I think it's around $12 per roll. So a couple dollars difference between the two, which obviously does add up and you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Now that Fuji's discontinued, I have to shoot Kodak. Um, so that's only just one small downside there. And then again, going back to low lighting situations, it's nice on a wedding day that I can shoot Kodak pretty much wherever and whenever. I have found myself shooting a lot more film at weddings lately because I have the flexibility to. When I was shooting Fuji 400, it really only worked in bright lighting scenarios where the sun was out, you know, we're in really open shade areas. Whereas Kodak, it works in every scenario. So I can shoot it indoors. I can shoot it out in a wooded forest area. On an overcast day, I'm still getting more than enough light to shoot Portra 400. So there's definitely a benefit with, you know, getting to shoot at higher shutter speeds um, with Portra 400, whereas with Fuji, I was at a 60th of a second a lot of the time just so that I could shoot it, especially in the environment that I'm in. I'm not in Southern California where I have sun all the time. I live in Ontario where it does fluctuate. So having Portra 400 really allows me to shoot film more of the time um, and to be able to shoot at higher shutter speeds rather than, you know, only a 60th of a second. I can shoot at 250th. Of a second. One last little thing that I found a difference between the two uh, is that the sun flare photographs differently on both film stocks. So I used to not shoot too much with the sun flare coming in to the camera when I was shooting Fuji 400, but now with Kodak, I really like the way that it captures sun flare. So I'll sometimes let a little bit of that flare come into the lens and it just really creates this beautiful 
overall warmness to the image. Whereas with Fuji when I would shoot it, I just noticed that it would kind of wash out the image or not really turn out at all. So I'm not sure if it's just the way that I shoot it, but I, I feel like I notice a difference in the way that the two capture the sun flares. And one last thing, I do find that Kodak's colors tend to be more truer to life. And I, I think I really like that. Like I like that what I saw in person um, is what is captured on the film. So the greens, the skin tones, everything to me looks more truer to life if I rate this um, with only one or two stocks of overexposure. It looks truer to life than Fuji did. Whereas Fuji always gave more of a pinky skin tone, pinky colors, you know, lots of pink in the whites. Uh, maybe that's because I overexposed this, you know, a few stops. But I do like that Kodak, to me, feels truer to life that warmness to it. It just has more of a mature shooting style feel to it, if that makes sense. Um, but personally, I really love uh, Portra and I'm, I'm glad that I was able to make the switch and pretty much forced to make the switch, but I do feel like it made my work a lot better and also just more enjoyable for me as, a, as an artist and as a photographer. So at first when I started shooting Portra 400, it was hard to know what shutter speeds made sense when I would meter and all of a sudden I would get 500th of a second at 2.8, I was hesitant to, to meter for that because Fuji 400 would never give me 500 uh, of a second shutter speed. So I just wanna encourage you that the more that you shoot Portra 400, you will start to understand the metering better. You'll start to trust your metering more um, and you'll just start to realize that it is completely different from Fuji. Um, so now I'm used to shooting at 500th of a second at 2.8, you know, when it's a fairly sunny day and maybe I'm in the shade. If I'm shooting in direct sun, I'm probably at a thousandth of a second at 2.8. Um, and then when I'm in really shaded spots, usually 250th. And then when it's very overcast or I'm close to the end of the day, I might be at 125th. So you'll start to memorize the different shutter speeds that you use throughout the day. Obviously, I'm still always using my meter. I always like to check it to make sure, but you'll start to feel more confident in what the meter is giving you. Um, but that initial switch, especially if, yeah, if you're switching from Fu Fuji 400, it will be a little bit scary at first, a little bit confusing because you're getting way different numbers, but just trust me, it will start to make sense. Um, and you'll start knowing the metering before you even pull out your meter. You'll just kind of automatically know based on the setting, based on the lighting, what your settings should be at. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about communication with your film lab. I think this is so important and scanning is such a big part of the process and, and what your images are gonna turn out. So I do work closely with PhotoVision. They're amazing if you're trying out a lab, I definitely recommend them. Amazing customer service. They'll really take care of you. They'll answer all of your questions. So I highly recommend working with them. Um, but not being afraid to ask for rescans or send them side by side comparisons. It's not often that I'm asking for rescans, but there is once in a while that the scanning comes back slightly inconsistent with my previous scans, and I will ask them to rescan the order. So what I'll usually do is I'll edit quickly one of the scans in Lightroom with my adjustments, and then I'll send them a direct side by side of you know the raw scan versus my edited version and then maybe i'll ask them to scan the rest of the order the same way or sometimes it's just a reference for next time because sometimes it can take me two seconds in lightroom to make those adjustments myself so i might just ask them for my next order can you make sure that it's closer to this edited scan where maybe the overall image is less warm maybe there's more magenta in there scanning so that there's more detail in the shadows rather than it being super contrasty and dark so just little things like that don't be afraid to edit the images um, and send side by side so that way they get an idea of what you're looking for because every photographer is so different everybody wants you know something so different you're not the same as the next person so they do need to know your preferences when they're scanning i also usually rush a few rolls from each order so i do like rushing maybe one or two rolls getting a three-day turnaround scan on them that way i can know that my metering was correct especially if i'm shooting again soon i did this a lot when i started shooting portra 400 because i really wasn't sure if they were even turning out 
So I do think it's a great idea to rush a few rolls if your lab can do that. I like getting to see the images back faster and again, getting to learn faster what I need to change for my next shoot. And then if there is, you know, something that I want changed in the scanning process, then I can quickly edit the side by side, send them that, um, and they can adjust for the rest of the order and how they're gonna scan those. So there are some benefits to rushing a few rolls and obviously getting your clients back some previews faster than waiting a few weeks. Lastly, I just wanted to say to you guys, uh, shooting film is so much more about the artist than about the tool. The film stock that you're using is just a tool. It's truly about the person behind the camera that's going to make those colors shine, that's going to make the lighting look good. So much about being a photographer isn't about the post process and the editing and the colors. It's about how you shoot in camera. So if you're getting the best lighting for your couples in the moment um, and you know how to work with the lighting, then of course your images are going to turn out way better um, no matter if you shot it on Fuji or Portra. Well, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Again, if there's any different topics that you want me to talk about in my next videos, make sure to put that below in the comments. I think one of my next videos is going to be on the Holga because I've fallen in love with this camera and I think that a lot of you should start pulling it out just for some fun shots during the reception or during the wedding. So I'm going to talk about that in one of my next videos. But thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.